Hello, and welcome to this presentation on preventing and managing dual input events. In this presentation, we will discuss the design of the side stick and how it is integrated in the flight control system. Afterwards, we will review the correct takeover technique and the alerts associated with dual inputs. Pilots use their side stick when they manually fly the aircraft. In order to operate the side stick correctly, your seating position and the armrest must be correctly adjusted. Flight instructors should pay careful attention to this during the first full flight simulator sessions. For guidance on this, please refer to our Safety First magazine number 25 and the win video What About Pilot Seating Position? The side sticks are in the heart of the Airbus fly-by-wire system and send signals to the flight control computers. The side sticks are spring-loaded neutral and, very importantly, are not linked. This means there is no feedback from the flight control services and no indication to the pilot flying control inputs to the pilot monitoring. If both pilots use their side sticks simultaneously, their orders are algebraically added, but limited to the equivalent of the full deflection of one side stick. As a result, the aircraft response may be more dynamic than what the pilot flying expects or less than expected if the other pilot deflects the side stick in the opposite direction. To avoid this dual input from happening, clear operating procedures and system warnings are put in place. The design philosophy of Airbus fly-by-wire aircraft require that only one pilot flies the aircraft at a time. If the pilot monitoring or the instructor wants to act on the side stick, he or she must use the correct takeover technique. Clearly announce, I have control. Press and maintain pressed the takeover push button in order to get full control of the aircraft. The pilot losing authority must immediately release the side stick and confirm this by announcing, you have control. This takeover push button is located on the inner top of the side stick. When pressed and maintaining pressed, it will deactivate the other side stick. To permanently deactivate the other side stick, the side stick takeover push button must be pressed for more than 40 seconds. It will remain deactivated until any pilot presses on any takeover push button. Note that if both pilots press their takeover push button, the last pilot to press gets the priority. A dual input on the side stick is triggering oral and visual warnings to the pilots. When a dual input is sensed, an oral dual input voice message is activated every five seconds. Dual input. Dual input. Additionally, the green captain and first officer side stick priority lights start flashing. Dual input. Dual input. As only one pilot can fly the aircraft, Dual he input. or she must press a maintain pressed the takeover push button to deactivate the disturbing side stick and clearly state, I have control. At this time, the red arrow light comes on in front of the pilot losing authority and a priority left audio voice message is triggered. Priority left. The pilot losing authority should confirm priority his status by left. applying UF control and must release his side stick. The green flashing captain and first officer side stick priority lights will extinguish. Note that if the pilot losing authority does not release his or her side stick, the green captain or first officer light changes to steady green in front of the pilot taking priority, indicating the other pilot's side stick is not in a neutral position. The red arrow light in front of the pilot losing authority will extinguish if the pilot taking control releases his takeover push button prior to the 40 second latching condition or the pilot losing control presses his takeover push button to cancel the latch condition with the associated audio priority right or priority left message. After the 40 seconds latching condition, the autopilot can be engaged to reduce the workload on the flight deck, while the red arrow remains illuminated in front of the pilot losing authority. 
activating any takeover push button will disconnect the autopilot and the second activation will cancel the priority taken, including the red arrow. It goes without saying that pressing and maintaining pressed the takeover push button must be an instinctive pilot action. In critical flight phases, or as defined by the operator, both pilots should be covering the side stick with their hands and be ready to manually take control. The thumb pressing position on the top of the side stick allows for a swift activation of the takeover push button. Flight instructors, but also pilot motoring, should not be hesitant to use his or her takeover push button. Old school practices from non fly by wire aircraft, like adding some inputs on the control column to help a trainee in the landing flare, are not allowed on fly by wire aircraft. Verbally prompting and, ch and challenging the pilot flying is the preferred technique. If the flight instructor deems the trainee is not performing as expected or deviates from the intended flight path, he should challenge him verbally if time permitting. If time critical or if the safety is in doubt, he or she should never hesitate to take over the controls by using the correct takeover technique. Remember that if, if after initiating the takeover procedure the trainee is still making side stick inputs, you will observe a steady green light on the glare shield. At the start of base training or initial line training, it is good practice to remind the trainee the takeover technique to avoid any confusion or negative feelings. Not only flight instructors, but all pilots should be familiar with the takeover procedure. Indeed, in case of pilot incapacitation and the side stick is involuntarily moved, the other pilot must be ready to deactivate the disturbing side stick. In this case of sudden incapacitation, the 40 seconds will seem to last forever. Starting the chrono on the glare shield straight after taking control may help to avoid releasing the takeover boot button before the latching condition is established. Note that the closing of the loop by the pilot taking control is very important. The UF control call from the pilot losing control and the absence of a green light in front of the pilot taking control is vital. If the green light is still on and the pilot losing control confirms he is not acting on the side stick, this could indicate a malfunction of the side stick system and this side stick should be deactivated for the remainder of the flight. Training organizations and aircraft operators are encouraged to include the takeover technique training in their initial type rating and recurrent training. Instructors can find the technique in the flight crew training manual and course designers can find some training recommendations in the FCTS. To conclude, we like to stress that if the pilot flying is not reacting as expected to the prompting or challenging from the pilot mortaring, he or she should not hesitate to take over control of the aircraft with the appropriate takeover technique. This includes the pilot mortaring presses and maintain pressed the takeover push button until the other flight crew member no longer uses his or her side stick. We hope you liked this presentation and we hope to see you again for the next one.